just a word of warning. If you spoil anything in the comments, we ain't gonna leave no clues. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation. The five points are articulator, packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and Spider-Man No Way Home is finally hitting theaters. To celebrate, we're gonna have a very special week of Spider-Man reviews. Today, Spider-Man Week concludes with a look at the Marvel Legends What If Wave Zombie Hunter Spidey. Starting off the packaging, and it's pretty much the same What If box that we already looked at with Captain Carter. What If logo, a purple motif, What If logo, and some artwork on the side and on the back. Zombie Hunter Spider-Man is in a ragtag group of survivors fighting his way through a zombie-infested world. Again, the build-a-figure for the wave is the Watcher, and here's everyone you need to build him. And for those who are interested, here's the UPC code. I liked it before, so it stands to reason I'll like it again. For packaging, I'm giving Zombie Zombie Hunter Spidey, one whole point. Moving on to presentation, and Zombie Hunter Spider-Man stands at six inches. At first, I thought this was going to be a mostly reuse of the Homecoming body, but that is not the case. His legs and feet are definitely reuse, as are the hands, but otherwise, this is a new sculpt. The bottom of his foot says 2021, though, so I don't know. From the top, and the head sculpt honestly doesn't look a whole heck of a lot like Tom Holland. If anything, he looks more like Hudson Thames, who voiced him on the show. Although, I don't know, from that angle, he does look a lot more like Holland. His hair, on the other hand, looks more like Andrew Garfield. Moving on down, and we can see that it's actually pretty different from the homecoming suit. The spider is bigger and bolder, the black outlining is different, the belt comes to a more traditional point, the web shooters are much more pronounced, and the logo on the back is completely different as well. From what I understand, they actually based this off of the way he looks at the new Disney thing, something to do with rights and Sony, because it always comes down to rights and Sony. One of the biggest things, however, that I'm personally very excited about are pinless joints in the arms. Because of the way that action figures are manufactured, the pins usually end up being red and they stick out like a sore thumb. Finally, we don't have that problem, and I am super excited to see where Hasbro takes it from here. Though this is a pretty good opportunity to remind everybody that Toy Biz was already doing this back in the year 2000, and then everyone just sort of dropped the ball. The other big thing about the figure is the paint detailing that makes it look dirty. We see some on the thigh, and also on the shoes. A lot of people aren't really crazy about this, and wish that he looked a bit more standard, and honestly, I can't disagree. My biggest issue is that the web lines aren't painted in. Forget painting the web lines, they couldn't even be bothered to finish sculpting them. My second biggest issue were these web shooters, but I'll get to those in the next category. The other thing about the figure that really jumps out is the color scheme. The red that they chose is fairly muted, but the blue is incredibly bright, especially as compared to other Spider-Man figures. It's a bit bright for my taste, but I do think that this would be a perfect blue for Superman. I'm actually surprised to say this, but I kind of like this suit a little bit better than the ones that they actually use in the movies. I like the bigger logo and the more comics accurate belt, and from a figure engineering standpoint, I love the pinless elbows. What I don't like is the lack of painted web lines. It's a trend that we're seeing more and more, and I am absolutely not here for it. And if I'm being honest, I really don't much care for his face. In general, I don't mind a static expression. In fact, I usually prefer it. This, however, is less static and more deer in the headlights. In the episode, Spider-Man had some emotional moments, but he was honestly very optimistic and positive. Here he's just got this middle distance thousand yard stare like he walked in on Aunt May and Tony Stark. A lot to love, but also some missed opportunities. For presentation, I'm giving Zombie Hunter Spidey half a point. Moving on to posability and Spider-Man's heads on a ball joint and a disc hinge. Up this much, all the way down. Not a lot of tilt, but all the way around. Swivel hinge shoulders raise up 90 degrees. No butterfly joint, which is kind of unusual for a Spider-Man. He does, however, have bicep swivel, pinless, double jointed elbows, and my biggest issue with the figure, these wrists. Pop quiz, what's the gesture that Spider-Man makes when he thwips? If you guessed this, you'd be correct. Let's talk about this web shooter that keeps you from bending it backwards. The one thing that every Spider-Man figure should be able to do, and this one can't. If you want to pull it off, you have to turn them to the side. And there. I think it's important to note that this isn't entirely Hasbro's fault. They may have made the figure, but Disney's the one that gave him the design. Moving on down, he does have an ab crunch, arches back that far, and hunches over that far. Not gonna lie, that is actually pretty good. Moving even further down, he has a swivel waist, ball jointed hips. Not a very good spread, unfortunately. If they just rounded the hips off a bit more, it would have been fine. Anyway, he has thigh cut, non-pinless, double jointed knees, and ankles that hinge back, hinge forward, and pivot. Despite the limitations in the wrists and the lack of butterfly joints, this Spider-Man figure is surprisingly limber. In a way, I kind of feel like you need to grade it on a curve. If it was any other character, you'd say, wow, this is incredible articulation. But because it's Spider-Man, you kind of feel like you need a bit more, when really, he's more than enough. For 
composability, I'm giving Zombie Hunter Spidey one whole point. Moving on to playability, and Spider-Man comes with his Spider-Man mask. He also comes with these fists. But of course, the main attraction is Doctor Strange's cloak. Unfortunately, I don't have any movie Doctor Strange figures, so I don't know if this cloak comes from one or if it's new. Taking it off of Peter for a minute, we can look at all the detail. Not much inside, though, but that's fine. The thing I'm not crazy about, however, is just how loosely the thing flops on and off. The good part about that is if you wanted to, you could put it on other versions of Spider-Man. You could even use it on other characters altogether. He also comes with the left leg of the Watcher, and it's, um, pretty... apricot. Bit of a dimple on mine, but if it's under the cloak, you'll never notice. Wah, 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 wah. For a gile. Must be Italian. If you wanted to put the new head on the homecoming body, you could just be warned that the ball is actually a bit smaller, so it does not click into place. Conversely, the homecoming head is too tight for this body. Oddly enough, it will click onto the far from home suit. It also fits on the Garfield body, and considering the hair, actually, I think this looks pretty good. Here it is on Pizza Spidey, Retro Card Spidey, and Peter Parker. And if you're curious, here's the new body with a classic comic book style Peter Parker head. But playability is more than just capes and head swaps, it's also about how well your figure plays with others. First up, here he is in between the suits from Homecoming and Far From Home. First up, here he is in between the suits from Homecoming and Far From Home. For just regular old Spider-Man mode, here he is there. Here he is betwixt the aforementioned Pete the Spidey and Retro Card. Since he's animated, here he is with some Into the Spider-Verse figures. For some Spider-Man No Way Home villains, here he is with Lizard, Green Goblin, Electro, and Doc Ock. Lizard and Goblin are from Toy Biz. Electro and Doc Ock are from Hasbro. For some other Spidey villains, here's Vulture, Demo Goblin, Mysterio, and Rhino. Rhino is from Toy Biz, but the rest of them are from Hasbro. I unfortunately don't have the Marvel Legends zombie cap, but I do have this bootleg Marvel Marvel Select one, which we looked at back in Halloween. Here he is with the bootleg Marvel Select Zombie Hulk. And here he is with the bootleg Marvel Select Zombie Spider-Man. Kind of creepy and meta when you think about it. For some zombies from the Distinguished Competition, here he is with the deceased versions of Green Lantern, Batman, Joker, and Aquaman. Here he is with all the Spider-Man weak figures. For the only other what-if figure I've looked at so far, here he is with Captain Carter. And as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. Some fun accessories and a few different collections you could slip them into. For playability, I'm giving Zombie Hunter Spider-Man one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. Depending on where you find them, assuming of course that you can find them, Zombie Hunter Spidey retails for between $19.99 and $22.99. I found mine at Target for $20 and I'm pretty happy with it. Does it suffer a bit because of a lack of paint detail or articulation? Well, yeah. Even so, with two heads, four hands, a cloak, and a build-a-figure piece, this figure is not only a pretty good value, but if you took away the cloak and the other what-if-isms, it's still a pretty good Spider-Man all on its own. For price, I'm giving Zombie Hunter Spidey one whole point for a grand total of 4.5 out of 5. Spider-Man week might be over, but there is more Spider-Man goodness coming in the days and weeks ahead, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a video. For more zombie goodness, click here to see the bootleg Marvel Legends zombies, and also click here to see the Deceased collection. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.